Hey, it's Steve. Welcome to this video series that I'm doing. This is going to be the first of 30 videos that I'll be posting to my blog and YouTube. So I'm doing a bit of a deep dive into creating videos for 30 days in a row. Um, the main reason I'm doing that is I want to get more into video and I don't have much experience with it at all. Like I've hardly done any videos other than maybe some interviews or being filmed when I was doing a, a, a public speech somewhere. And um, I going to be doing a video course series for Conscious Growth Club coming up and I just want to get some more experience under my belt doing this building skill and building practice with uh, this medium. I've been blogging for 12 and a half years now, started blogging in October 2004 and that's been a great medium for me and I expect I'll continue blogging but I also want to branch out and try something new and I do that occasionally like I've branched out into podcasting, uh, did that for a few years and um, you know, I've been doing um, three-day workshops since 2009, done a bunch of speaking at other people's events, done lots of interviews, so I like to mix it up now and then. So this seems like a cool medium to get into, so I wanted to try this. Uh, another thing is that uh, timing-wise, a bunch of my friends are doing this now, like 10 people I know I think are, are all doing this at the same time. Um, most of them started a few days ago, so I'm starting a little bit late for this group, but it's kind of cool that we get to you know, give each other mutual support and feedback along the way. So there's a lot of energy about everybody doing this and sharing their videos with each other. Um, so in fact, if you're interested in doing it, I invite you to you know, join in and uh, um, you know, join the party and start doing your own 30-day video series if that's something that interests you and you want to get up to speed. Um, you know, and if, if, by the way, you're interested in uh, Conscious Growth Club specifically, you can learn more about that at ConsciousGrowthClub.org. So I don't want to get into all that in this particular video. Um, as I do the series, I want to keep the videos fairly short, fairly simple. I don't want to over-engineer them or create tons of editing work. You know, mostly I just want to do these things in as few takes as possible and just get the information out there. Um, again, I'm doing this partly for my own comfort, just to get used to video and to share some, you know, personal growth tips with people along the way. So I don't want to, I don't want to make this, you know, series just about one thing in particular. I want to cover different personal growth topics as I go along, much like I would do with, with blogging. So every day or every few days, I might even pivot to a different topic. Who knows? I'm just going to do this with the flow of, you know, inspiration and what comes up and see what, you know, see what comes out. Um, I, I, another reason I'm doing this at this particular time is that today, April 14, is my 46th birthday. And so I thought this would be a cool way to start off the next year of my life, you know, with this, with some kind of challenge. I love doing 30 day deep dives, especially because you learn so much from them. So, you know, I thought this would be a, a cool one to, to kick off uh, the next year of my life with. Um, there is a twist to this though. And this is a reason I almost didn't do this series. I didn't really want to do it. And, you know, timing wise, a lot of friends are doing it now. And I knew I kind of wanted to do this deep dive into video eventually. So it's, it's pretty good. But the main reason I didn't want to do it initially uh, at this time is that uh, I had already planned to do another um, deep dive uh, around this time. And that, and, and that would be a weird combo to combine with a 30-day video series. But after thinking it over, I decided, yeah, they could work together. I don't automatically have to rule, rule this out. Um, I'm a little nervous about doing the two of these together, though, because it's a... It's a it's a strange combination, um, which is definitely going to make the video series a little bit more difficult. But what the hell, I like a challenge, so why not? Uh, so the second um, experience I'm overlapping with this one is that I'm going to do another water fasting trial. And uh, last year, I think it was around September, I did um, a 17-day water fast. And I was pretty impressed I was able to go that far because uh, I'd had really very little experience with water fasting before then. I'd only done two and a half days before and then I gave up. Uh, many, many years ago. And I think the reason I gave up is I was just ignorant about it. Um, I didn't realize that water fasting gets a lot easier after the first three to four days. Um, you know, usually past the 72 hour, 84 hour mark, it gets a lot easier because then your body has adapted and you're kicking into fasting mode and now you're not hungry anymore. And when the hunger goes away, it becomes much easier. Whereas, you know, especially days two and days three, it's like hour by hour, just, you know, making yourself not eat. Um, so you can see why I might not want to combine those two, um, but and this time I decided to, to I want I really want to try a longer fast if I can do it because last year um, when I did the 17 days I felt like I still had to cut it short I was you know, it was smooth sailing the last like 10 days of or so the first week was the was the most challenging the first three days especially but after I got past that point it was really like not so bad you know some brain fog that first week but then. 
um, I could work for like 12 hours a day sometimes and be fine with that. The main thing I had to get used to is having very little physical energy. So I couldn't exercise during that time and it was um, you know, pretty variable. It was hard to predict how I was gonna feel each day. So some days, like I could go for an hour long walk and it'd be no problem. Other days, it's like if I just took a 15 minute walk, I'd be exhausted and need to sit down. Um, now I did that fast totally unsupervised, which you know I'm not going to recommend to anybody else because that you know there may be medical issues you have and there's you know reasons for not doing it. Uh, the main risk, the main danger from fasting, is that you stand up too quickly and you get dizzy and you pass out or you overexert yourself physically and you pass out and you fall and you hurt yourself from falling. Uh, so. Um, you know, as I was going through the fast, I kind of learned how to adapt to that and just having really low physical energy much of the time. However, mentally, I was okay. Like, I could sit at my desk and do some work. So it was actually a reasonably productive time work-wise um, if I'm doing mental work. Physically, I just had to lower my standards tremendously and not waste too much energy. In fact, it's generally a bad idea to do any kind of exercise except for maybe really light stuff like some light yoga, short walks, things like that. Because the more you exercise during a fast, the more you're just going to break down uh, muscle tissue. And that's not what you want to be breaking down during a fast, ideally. Um, so this time, my goal for the fast is to see if I can go for 30 days. And last time I did it, you know, the 17 days, I felt like I could go longer. And the reason I cut it short and stopped is because I had a speaking engagement in London and I didn't want to be doing this while I was traveling. And I think that would have been very unwise. So I cut the, I cut the fast, you know, about the, I went about as long as I could and then I cut it, uh, cut it. And I only gave myself three days to come off the fast, which I think was a little too short. Um, because when you end a fast, your digestive juices um, are pretty weak, especially if you've gone, you know, for more than a week or so of fasting. And it takes time to rebuild your digestive strength. And so you want to start, um, you know, in reintroducing food very gradually, like maybe with some diluted fresh juice. And uh, many people break their fast with really juicy fruit like watermelon. Um, I had some watermelon, cantaloupe, strawberries that first day. That was fine. But I think I reintroduced cooked food a little too soon, like jumped too quickly to steamed vegetables and, and um, some, uh, you know, brown rice or potatoes, things like that. Like that was too quick a jump. So this time I want to have more time to gradually come off of it. Now, I say that my goal is to see if I can do 30 days this time, uh, very ostensibly, because, you know, I don't want to get, a, I don't want this to be a pride thing. Um, there is a self-discipline aspect to it, but more importantly, there's a health aspect. And so if I start running into problems, especially since I'm doing this unsupervised, um, you know, anything starts going wrong, I'm going to break the fast, okay? So whether it's at like the two-week mark or the four-week mark or whatever, or if I pass 30 days and I want to keep going a bit, fine. Um, but I want to see if I can get to the point where listening, listening to my body, I get the signal where true hunger returns. And I didn't reach that point last time, but eventually when you fast, you reach a point where your body will signal you when it's really time to start eating again. And if you go beyond that point, now you're now you're getting into starvation mode where you're breaking down valuable tissue. Whereas during a fast, um, when you do it right, what your body does is it breaks down the most uh, dysfunctional and decrepit tissue. It kind of cleans up your organs and then um, later on, re you know, rebuilds them with healthier tissue. So it's, it's basically an internal cleansing. Uh, why would I want to do a fast? Well, um, I've been getting into detoxification and I've seen some amazing benefits from it. Just like really high mental clarity and, uh, you know, like tons of motivation. Um, I've been doing like various cleanses and detoxes for many, many years. I've been vegan for more than 20 years um, and, uh, you know, done, done raw foods a lot, uh, ate raw foods for six months, tried a, a, a juice, um, juice only period for 30 days where I was only having fresh juice for 30 days. I think that was back in 2008 I did that. So I have a long history of doing these kind of things and many of these changes are very subtle. Like I don't really notice that much of a benefit. And if I do notice the benefits, it's usually when I stop doing the cleanse uh, rather than during it, with some exceptions. Like when I did a seven day green smoothie cleanse, that was really high mental clarity all throughout. When I did the juice feast for 30 days, that was kind of like up and down, really rough uh, going through it. But when I stopped, I definitely noticed a bit of a boost there, like more emotional clarity, more mental clarity, more motivation. And the year after that, I started doing three day workshops, which was, uh, you know, that's, that's been a great um, part of my journey. So um, around, uh, I think it was August 2015, I really got into studying detox more 
And uh, there was a guy who was a reader of my blog named Alex Bloom who had created this website called thesupermandiet.com and I started reading his work on that and I tried one of, the, one of the protocols he put together. It was pretty amazing. It was taking a bunch of different substances to help detoxify the body and uh, I did that for about 30 days taking like seven or eight different things. And I can talk more about that later in the series if people are interested in that sort of thing. But it was, um, it was kind of, you know, so-so during those 30 days. Like I felt a bit lazy and a bit mentally foggy. I, sleeped a bit, I, I slept a bit more. After I stopped though, it took me about two, three days to stabilize. And then it was like taking the pill from the movie Limitless. It was just like plowing through tons of work, like massive mental clarity. And uh, I'd say the main benefit is that I didn't really have to push myself to get motivated to work on my goals anymore. It's like when I would think of a goal, I would find myself just diving into action without even trying. Like I couldn't stop myself. And I really had to like pull myself back to get myself to stop working. Um, otherwise I could just work all day long and just doing all this, you know, mental work, creative work. And it was great. I got so much done. That was the time period where I finally, um, you know, redid my website design. Uh, last year I did f uh, four workshops in four months, which was like more than I've ever done in that period of time. And now this year I'm working on the Conscious Growth Club, like one of the biggest projects I've ever done since I started blogging. And all that really is stemming from having this heightened mental clarity and just this massive amount of motivation. So I wanna keep re investing more in this and I'm really curious to see what else is possible. And I know fasting is one of the ways to help detoxify the body even more. I mean, the truth is we live in a, you know, a somewhat polluted environment. We drink polluted water, we breathe polluted air, you know, we have food that has herbicides in it and pesticides in it, and there's just, you know, chemical pollutants all over the place, things that we didn't have, um, you know, in existence a couple hundred years ago. If we lived in a very pure and pristine environment, that might be a different thing, but we, we don't. And our body's natural systems for, you know, pulling out these toxins get overloaded. And so every once in a while, I think it makes sense to, to help assist that process. Um, I wish it were necessary to do that kind of thing, but it's, you know, it's pretty amazing. And what's really done is given me a lot of clarity about the connection between the mind and the brain. And, you know, on a normal day-to-day -day basis, we can lose that sense of connection. We notice it though, when we take certain substances. For instance, try having six or eight shots of alcohol and, you know, that affects the brain. It's a neurotoxin, uh, hence the phrase, in, or hence the word intoxicated, toxic in the middle of it. And you'll notice an effect. You know, you'll notice that your mind is affected when you're drunk. If you have a couple cups of coffee, especially if you hadn't had coffee in a long time, you'll notice the effect. You'll notice that your mind is affected by what's going on physically in your brain. Well, there's another level to that in that, you know, what you perceive of as normal, you know, your normal baseline level could be raised. Like you could have much higher clarity, much higher motivation, much higher self-discipline. Uh, if your brain was functioning more cleanly, if it didn't have some toxins lodged in it, like heavy metals and things that can short circuit your neural firings. So, um, you know, every once in a while it makes sense to do some of this cleanup. So, um, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a skeptic about some of this because I know there's a lot of crap out there that's just like all marketing hype and fluff. Uh, but I'm definitely of an experimental attitude going into this. And I think if I think things are relatively safe to try, then I'll try things and I'll experiment with it. And I've, I've gotten you know, some benefits from the fast I did last year, just extra clarity, uh, more emotional stability, emotional resilience, so things don't bother me as much. Um, and, and just like a lot of drive and a lot of motivation, which has been wonderful. So I wanna keep leveraging that more. And that, you know, partly this is a timing thing because I'm gonna be launching, uh, you know, doing the official launch of Conscious Growth Club soon and opening up the early access group even sooner than that. And this is gonna be a big long-term shift in my life. You know, this is gonna be a huge uh, change in my lifestyle for, for probably for years to come. And so I wanna give myself every advantage <laughs> going into this. And I think if I'm gonna do this fast at any point, it makes sense to do it before the full launch so I can you know, enjoy that extra mental clarity. Even if it's just a smaller boost this time, because I've already done a lot of work on this path, I'll take it. You know, if it gives me an extra 10% edge, hey, I'll take it. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing timing-wise. Um, what else? Oh, you know, again, I, I'm going to focus on the safety of this. So I'm not, I'm not planning on taking big risks here. It surprised me last time I was able to go 17 days. So I'm going to aim for 30, but I'm not going to get my ego wrapped up in that and uh, not make it a pride thing. So if I have to stop early, I'll stop early. Now, you know, the first three, four days are going to be the hardest. So the next few days, especially, is probably going to be a little bit rough for me energy wise. I'll probably be hungry. <laughs> um, 
So the, another reason I wanted to do this is that, you know, I do a lot of these deep dives and this is a chance for people to get more insight into what it's like to do one of these deep dives, one of these lifestyle experiments um, as I go through this video series. So I'll share some updates on the fasting about, you know, throughout the video series, but I don't really want to make the whole video series about the fast because I think that would be pretty limiting and we can cover a lot of other topics along the way too. Um, you know, again, I'm just going to listen to my body as I go along. If I can only do like a few minutes video one day because that's all the energy I have, fine, I'll do that. Um, otherwise, I think once I get past the first few days and especially past the first week, I'll probably be okay to go, you know, to go longer. I'll just have to get used to having, um, you know, lower physical energy and not overexert myself. So I'm not planning to do any running during this time. Normally I like going, you know, for maybe a 45 minute run each morning. I didn't do that this morning. Uh, so today is, a Today is the first official day of the fast. Now, I started it um, this morning. So I had breakfast this morning, had some oatmeal for breakfast, and then um, I had some uh, fresh juice a few hours after that, a quart of juice. And I was, you know, I finished that around 10 a.m. So my fast officially started at 10 a.m. And right now is um, it's 4.20, so I've been going for um, almost six and a half hours so far. So that's, you know, it's okay. I'm a little bit hungry right now because I skipped lunch. And I'll be coming up on dinner time soon, so I'll have to skip another meal there. One of the reasons I like um, starting a fast, you know, in, in, the, in the morning instead of like at the end of an evening meal is that, um, you know, the first like 8 or 12 hours are not that difficult. You just like you missed a meal or two and you might, have, you might feel a little bit famished, but it's not that big a deal. And so I want to have that nighttime sleep, like tonight, because when you're sleeping, you don't notice how much, you know, how hungry you are. So I want to have that nighttime sleep a little bit later. Whereas if I stopped after the evening meal, you're getting that normally easy period anyway, you're just sleeping through it. And so it seems like kind of a waste. So I want to go through, you know, some, you know, go through the day when it's not too tough. And then when it starts to get a little bit more difficult, I get to go to sleep for that first night. So that sort of speeds me along through roughly the first 24 hours. And then I just got to deal with the difficulties of day two and day three. And, uh, you know, I'll deal with that as it comes up. Um, what else? What else? So uh, I want to, you know, I, I want to keep this video series fairly simple, especially if I'm not feeling great. Um, this might be one of the longer ones I record. I'll see. You know, I haven't done this before, so who knows? Maybe we get going and, you know, we just uh, dive into some topics and try to keep it interesting for you. Um, anyway, that's it for today. So I will see you tomorrow.